look, I'm, I get it. They're, they're not rush, and that's good. That's a good thing. It's like Getty Lee, but less annoying. That's that's all I'm saying. <laughs> Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Ned Bellavance, Ned1313 on Twitter, and welcome to Terraform Tuesday. We are going to be getting into Terraformer, not the awesome album by Thank You Scientist, but rather the software that is meant to help you take existing infrastructure and create Terraform configuration files based off that infrastructure and generate state to get those resources imported into the management of Terraform. That's the whole idea behind it. And I do want to call out something here before we get into the main topic. Naming is hard. And when you name something Terraformer, that's a pretty good name. So I just want to I want to give credit where credit is due. Well named in general. Now, uh, before I want to get into the main topic, just one quick thing. I do have a Patreon. So if you like what I'm doing here and you want to support me, the lowest tier starts at two dollars, two dollars. And that, you know, you already get access to the videos and my daily podcast because I don't keep that behind a locked gate. But you do get access to a weekly newsletter that I publish every Monday that summarizes what's going on in the Ned in the Cloud sphere. And you could, uh, you know, read that in the morning with a cup of coffee. Might not be a bad idea. So if that is of interest to you, the link to my Patreon is down in the description. Your support is support. Your support is appreciated, but absolutely not required. Watching the video is good enough for me. All right, let's talk about Terraformer. So Terraformer, if I understand it properly, was originally based around GCP. That was the original intention behind it. If you go to the GitHub repository for Terraformer, it's for Google Cloud. That was the original idea, but it has since expanded into other platforms. And the one that I'm going to be focusing on for this demo is going to be Microsoft Azure. And this is meant to be an exploration. We're going to explore Terraformer together. Now, what are my expectations when it comes to Terraformer? Well, there's a few things that I expect Terraformer to be able to do. All the resources that I pointed at in my target infrastructure need to be accounted for by the created file from Terraformer. That's number one. Number two, all the settings for those resources that are driven by the API also have to be accounted for. If I have some metadata tags or specific settings for a different for a particular resource, that information needs to be converted into a Terraform config. If it doesn't convert that, then it's not really much good to me. Number three, I expect all the resources to be well documented that are supported by Terraformer. I should be able to take all of those resources and import them into a Terraform state file. And lastly, once I have that state file, I should be able to run Terraform plan against that state file and the target infrastructure. And Terraformer should come back, well, Terraform in this case, should come back and say that no infrastructure changes are needed. Those are my expectations. Now, here's what I don't expect. expect. I'm, not, I'm not going any further than those main points. I don't expect Terraformer to produce these elegant configuration files that have count and for each loops in it. I don't expect it to generate modules or break things into modules for me. I don't have that expectation. That's obviously a much more difficult problem to crack. I don't expect that Terraformer is going to set up the state file or the back end for me, although it might. I don't expect Terraformer to know anything about the internal configuration of a resource that is not defined by the API. What do I mean by that? I want to dig into that for a second because this is an important distinction. We have settings for a resource that are defined by the API. When you create a resource on Azure, you give it some settings. If you're creating something like an Azure VM, then once you spin up that VM, you can log into that VM and configure additional settings. I don't expect Terraformer to know anything about the internal settings on that virtual machine because that's not defined by the Azure API. That's defined by me once I log into the virtual machine. That's better suited for something like Ansible, Puppet, or Chef. Okay, 
The last thing I don't expect is that the environment will be altered in any way by Terraform. This should be a read-only operation, basically. I don't expect to point Terraformer at something and have it change anything about my existing environments. So those are the thing, those are my general expectations. All right, so like I said, this is going to be a journey. Now, the next thing is I need a target environment to create. What is that target environment going to look like? Well, I'm going to use a basic Azure VNet for my first deployment, and I'm actually going to use the Azure GitHub Quick Starts. I'm gonna use one of the ARM templates in there. Now, why am I choosing to use an ARM template as opposed to deploying the environment using Terraform? Because this is Terraform Tuesday, after all. Well, I don't want this sort of Ouroboros effect where I'm using Terraform to create an environment which I will create new config files for using Terraformer and then use with Terraform. You see, it's this circular logic. That's not gonna be the reality for someone who's actually using this tool in the wild. The reality for someone using this tool in the wild is they have existing infrastructure and maybe they used PowerShell scripts, maybe they used an ARM template. Like, I don't know what they used to create that environment and it should not matter. So we're gonna focus on creating it with the ARM template and then using Terraformer to convert those resources to Terraform configuration files. Okay, so that's the thought there. I have two more environments in mind and we're not gonna get to those and we'll see why in a little bit because I've run through this but I did have two more complicated environments in mind that I wanted to do. One that was still all infrastructure as a service, and it was going to be a three-tier application running on Azure VMs. And then the third one was going to be all platform as a service using things like app service, SQL as a service, or was this, I think it was SQL as a service, and maybe some functions. It had a lot of stuff sprinkled in there. And these were reference architectures that Microsoft has available. Unfortunately, we don't get to those. And, and we'll find out why later. But that's the basic idea. We're going to stand up a basic VNet and we're then we're going to try to create configuration files in Terraform using Terraformer based off of that basic configuration. And then once we have those files, which should include a state file with all the imported resource IDs, once we have that, we'll try to run Terraform plan to validate that the target res the target resource is now being managed by Terraform, but it, no changes are necessary because Terraformer did a good job of getting the configuration files together and everything imported. So that's that's the idea. That's the core premise that we're going with. So why don't we start by first deploying our target example environment? All right, here are the files that we're working with today. If you wanted to follow along or do this afterwards, you can find these files on my GitHub. That's where you can always find them. There should be a link popping up right about now. So if you want to follow along, go to the GitHub, clone the repo, you're good to go. Now, what are we doing here? We've got a commands.sh, which summarizes all the commands that we're gonna run through because I'm a terrible typist and it's a lot easier for me to copy and paste. The first thing that you need to do if you wanted to follow along is install Terraformer. Now, I already have it installed. Interesting thing about Terraformer, as I was reading through the documentation, the first recommendation was that you install from source, which means having Go installed and being able to compile from Go. <laughs> and I, I did that. I did eventually do that, and it took a while. But they also have releases available for download. So probably go that way. The releases have one or more plugins bundled with them. So if you know you're only gonna be working with a single cloud provider, you can download the cloud provider specific version of Terraformer, or you can just get all of the providers. So this first line here, the export provider equals all, means I'm getting all the providers. I'm getting that bundle. It still downloads as a binary that you can run on whatever your target platform is. Now, like I said, I already ran that. If I run, if I run Terraformer, version down here, I'm on version 0.8.10. So that's the version of Terraformer that I'm using in case you're curious. So let's move forward and we're going to deploy a basic VNet here. So change these first two settings to whatever makes sense for you. I'm gonna deploy in the location East US with the resource group name TacoNet, but you know, you do you, whatever makes sense for you. So let me just highlight those two and run them down in the console. All right, now that I have my reference variables set, I'll go ahead and log in using Azure. And that's gonna pop up a browser that you can't see, it's in a separate window, but I'm gonna go ahead and log in using 
the Azure CLI. So I'm clicking on that link in the other window and it should return control back there. All right, so it's gonna list out all my subscriptions. Now I can go ahead and select a subscription to use. So we'll do AZ account set dash S and the name of the subscription. And now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new resource group that we want to deploy our resource into. We're going to run AZ group create, run that real quick. That should deploy relatively quickly. Boom, we got our resource group. And now I'm going to deploy a template, an ARM template to that resource group from a template URI. So this is a link to the raw version of a quick start template. And I've even got it down to the commit ID. So this should be valid even if they update the template beyond this. So I'll go ahead and run that. And the only parameter that I'm setting here is I want the VNet name to be the same as the resource group name. So I'll go ahead and run that now. That'll go out and deploy that VNet. It really shouldn't take very long because it's only deploying two, uh, one VNet with two subnets. That's it, it's a very simple configuration. Once that comes back, we can move to the portion where we use Terraformer. Now, what do you need if you're going to run Terraformer? You need a way to authenticate to Azure, and it pretty much uses the same scheme as you would use with Terraform. So if you're using the Azure CLI, it can take advantage of that Azure CLI authentication. The only thing it needs from you is the Azure subscription ID. So what we're gonna do here is set the environment variable arm subscription ID to the current subscriptions that's selected. So let's go ahead and run that now. All right, there we go. And you know, obviously our VNet finished deploying, so we know that's good. Now let's go ahead and go into the created environments Azure VNet. That's where I want to plan out my Terraformer configuration, where I want the configuration files to be generated. So I'll go into that directory. There we go. And now that we're there, let's start looking at Terraformer a little bit. And we can start by just doing a basic Terraformer help, right? Because maybe this is the first time we're using it. We want to know what commands are available out of the box to us. And there's really four commands. There's the help command itself, import, which does the actual import of your Terraform configuration into a state, more or less. There's plan, which will plan it out, and then you can make some changes afterward. And then there's version, print out the current version. Well, we've already done the version one, we've done help, so maybe the next one to run is plan. Let's take a closer look at what's in there. And I'll save you a little typing. We're gonna do Terraformer plan, and then there's a provider specific version of that Azure-H. So this will tell us what flags are available for running Terraform plan Azure. So we're gonna plan out our configuration before we do the import. So there's a whole bunch of flags here. The one that I want to call out, well, there's a few I wanna call out. First is dash dash output. This tells it what format you want the Terraform configurations to be in. We want them to be in HCL, at least that's what I want. I, I prefer HCL, I don't wanna to try to read through JSON. So we're gonna do H HCL. The next one is resource group. Which resource group should it be looking at for resources? And you, give it a string of whatever that resource group is. And right now it looks like it's limited to a single resource group. So that's where we're at for that. Now, fortunately, all of my virtual networking is in the same resource group, so it doesn't matter. Then the next flag is dash dash resources. And this is where you define which resources it finds in that resource group should be part of this configuration. I'm going to use dollar uh, the star symbol to say I want all the different resource types in my configuration. And then lastly, I added the dash dash verbose so you can see the verbose output as it tries to run the plan. So we're gonna go ahead and run that now and it should go out, query all the resources that are in that resource group and then create, plan out a, uh... all right, and it immediately stopped. And what is it telling us here? It says, it tried to open this directory and it did not find this directory. What's the directory? It's looking for the Terraform plugin. So it looks like I skipped a vital step. Now I actually went back and read the documentation. I know, RTFM, right? <laughs> it turns out you actually need a file like versions.tf. It doesn't have to be named that, but you have to define which providers you're going to use and then run Terraform in it from the directory that you're going to run 
the Terraformer plan so it can find the plugins it needs to talk to Azure. So I'm going to use a cat command to echo in this content here. So I'll go ahead and do that now. Now I have a Terraform versions file in this directory over here. And the next thing I'll do is run Terraform in it and that will download those plugins. And it also caches those plugins in that terraform.d directory of your user name or your home directory, I should say. Now let's go ahead and try to run this plan again. And we should get a little bit farther in the process. Now, because I have verbose on, it's going to have a lot of output there, but basically it's going to generate an authentication token for each resource type within Azure and then query each of those resource types if it finds that there's an existing resource in your resource group that matches it. So it's going to take a moment. I'll go ahead and fast forward to the point where it has finished its initial plan. Okay, it has finished the plan process. And now if we expand out this generated folder, we can see in the path generated Azure RM Terraformer, we have a file called plan.json. We can also see if we just do a simple tree here, that might even be easier to see. We've got a whole tree here of multiple directories with a plan.json at the end. What's in this thing? Let's take a look. All right, let's scroll, we'll go all the way to the top here. All right, so it's telling us what version of Terraformer we used, what provider we're using, and then options. What resources did we decide to include? And we included all of them. So this should be in theory, every different different type of resource that is supported by Terraformer. And we didn't exclude any of them. We've got a path pattern that defines where it's going to place the files that it generates and the path where it generates it. Now the state is set to local. So we're using a local state file. We're not writing this to a remote state. The resource group is there. That's the one that we set. We have the output there. So that all looks good. And then if we scroll down a little bit here, it gives us all the resources it found. And a lot of these are set to null because they don't exist in that resource group. It did find the resource group itself and grab some information about it. That is useful to know. And then if we scroll down some more, we get to the virtual network and that is where it also defines things. And you'll see under instance info, it has an ID. That's the ID it's going to use for the naming address of the resource inside the Terraform configuration. You can alter this plan file to whatever you want it to be. So if you want to change the IDs it automatically generates, no big deal. Just go in here, alter the plan file before you do the import and you are good to go. I'm not gonna change anything here. So let's just go to the next step, which is to run Terraform import. And we wanna import a plan. You can skip the plan stage if you want, but just like with Terraform, it's probably best to run plan and see what it's going to do, right? And then we're going to point it at this generated plan.json file that has all the things that it's going to generate from. This way it doesn't have to query Azure all over again. It has all the information it needs locally. So we'll go ahead and run that now. It should run through this very quickly. Boom, there we go. Now, what did it actually create? Let's go ahead and do another tree. And whoa, it produced a lot of information. And if we scroll up, we can see every different resource type that we included there, even though it doesn't have any actual resources, it has added a provider.tf and a variables.tf. That is, that's a little bit much. Let's, what's in the resource group is a little bit different. It actually has an outputs and a resource group underscore group.tf. So that's some actual Terraform config. And I assume if we go down to virtual networks, it has the same there as well and also has a variables file. Now that's a little bit excessive here, but let's take a look at what's in those actual files. And we'll start by expanding this and going down to resource group. And we'll take a look at, let's start with provider. What's in the provider? Well, the provider has two blocks in it. It's got a provider block for Azure RM, setting the version to 2.49.0 or greater, as long as it stays in the 2.49 realm. And then we have a separate Terraform block that also defines the required providers. Now, those of you who are familiar with the newer versions of Terraform know that you gotta choose one or the other and the specification of a version in the provider block is being deprecated. I don't think you can do both. You can really only do one. So we're not off to a great start here. Okay, let's take a look at the resource group itself. 
that seems very straightforward. It's the proper uh, resource type for this provider. It has an address of TFER dash dash TacoNet, which it came up with based off of its own internal naming scheme. The location is correct and the name is correct. Okay, not bad. And we also have a state file here, which I assume has the single tariff, uh, has the single resource group in it, and it has a value that defines where you can find that resource group by ID. Okay, that seems relatively straightforward. Now, how are we going to make use of that? Because that seems like I only have it in one, I only have my resource group in one state file. Is there a state file in my virtual network directory? There's also a state file in my virtual network directory. And there's also a bunch of new files that I haven't seen before. So let's start with variables. What's defined here? This is interesting. We're using a data source of Terraform remote state, and we're calling it resource group. The backend is local, so we're pointing to a local remote state backend for, as a data source. And then the path corresponds to the state file for our resource group. Okay. So why do we need this data source to a different state file? Well, let's take a look at the virtual network configuration and we can immediately see why. If we look at the resource group name, rather than putting the name in there, it's putting a data source referral back to the name of the resource group that's in a separate state file. So I've got two different state files here. What about the rest of this configuration? Does it make sense? Address space, spot on. That's the address space that's part of that template. Location is good, name is good. Subnet, there were two subnets. Address prefix is good. Wait, what's this ID thing? ID is not an argument for a subnet. The subnet has an ID, that's a, an attribute of subnet, but it's not actually an argument you can give Azure. Azure is the one who comes up with that after you tell it to make a subnet. So I don't think that's going to fly if we try to do a Terraform plan based off this or a Terraform validate. But okay, moving forward a little bit, VM protected protection enabled equals false. Well, I don't remember setting that in anything, but I also don't remember not setting it. So maybe that's something to follow up on. And lastly, there is an output and it is simply giving us the output of the ID of this VNet. Okay. So that's what's in here. And that's a little bit, I don't, I'm not a huge fan of that file structure. So let's go ahead and why don't we clear that out and try again? So I'll go ahead and run rm rf generated to just delete this whole directory. All right, that's gone. Now we're going to run terraformer plan Azure, some of the same settings as before, but we're going to add two additional things here. One is compact and the second one is path pattern. And what are these two? arguments do. Compact is there if you have multiple resources of the same type, rather than putting them in separate files, it will put them all in the same file. Now we only have one VNet, so it's not going to do that. But it's important to understand that argument exists or that switch exists and you can use it. The other one is the path pattern. Where should it place the files and how should it group them? I'm using what it, the syntax that was suggested to me in the help file. And basically I'm saying, output directory, and then provider directory, and then group everything together to use the same state file and the same configuration files. So that should give me a much more squished version of what it just gave me before. So let's go ahead and run that now. And it's going to go out and go through its entire plan process again, which means reaching out to Azure to get the information about all of these resources and generating a new plan.json file. So I'll go ahead and fast forward to when that's complete. Okay, that is complete. Now we can go ahead and run Terraformer import plan and point it at that plan.json file again. I'll go ahead and run that. And that goes very quickly because it only has the small number of resources and it's using the plan.json file. So it doesn't have to reach back out to Microsoft to get that information. Let's take a look at what the tree structure looks like now. Okay, that is much simpler. We've got a generated directory, we've got an Azure RM subdirectory, and then all of the files are in that. Let's take a look at what is in those files. I assume it's basically going to be the same. We'll start with the provider. All right, so the provider still has the version defined in two blocks, which is probably not going to work, but we'll, we'll check it out. We'll see what happens. 
And the next one, let's take a look at the variables. Variables, it's still defining a remote state that's local. I'm not sure why, but okay. Next, let's take a look at the resources file and see what's defined there. We have our resource group, and for whatever reason, the virtual network under resource group name is still using that data source instead of referring to the resource that's in the same configuration as itself. So we're actually referring to the properties defined inside a state file that's the same state file that's being used by this resource. I, I guess you can do that, but it's kind of funky. And the IDs are still there for the subnet. Ideally, since there is a separate Azure RM subnet resource, I would rather see those broken out into their own resource and then added in to the uh, virtual network as a list. But since I decided to do it, things this way, I, I guess that's fine. And lastly, let's take a look at outputs. So now we have an output for the VNet ID, the resource group name, and the resource group ID. Those are all defined. Okay, that sounds fine. Uh, lastly, is there anything else we want to take a look at here? Let's take a look at the state. Um, now this is interesting. So the Terraform version inside the state says that it's 12.29. But if I take a look at my current Terraform version, well, if I could type, my current Terraform version is 14.6. So that's a little weird that it chose a Terraform version that's, you know, two whole versions behind. But okay, and the rest of it seems to mostly make sense. So, okay, I have a Terraform state file. In theory, I should be able to simply run Terraform in it to get the plugins in this directory and then run a Terraform plan and it should tell me that no infrastructure changes are required. Let's see how that works out. Okay, let's see if we can use this bad boy. So we're gonna go into that Azure RM subdirectory and we're gonna try to run Terraform in it and see what happens. In theory, it should read the configuration and simply get the version of Azure RM for us. But instead it throws this invalid legacy provider address thing. And maybe that's because of the double uh, entry for the versions of Terraform. So let's go ahead and go into that provider directory, and we know that we don't define version here. We define it in the Terraform block. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete that out and save it. Let's try running Terraform in it again. Nope, now we're getting the exact same error again, which is weird. Okay, well, I know that you need to add a features block here for the version 2.0 and greater of the Azure RM file. So maybe that's the problem. I'll try to run it again. No, it's still giving me this error. I wonder if something's wrong with the state file. Let's try that. Let's rename the state file. Just, just try that. Try that out. So I'll just rename the state file so it doesn't see the state file. It's not trying to use that anymore and run Terraform in it and see what happens. Okay, now it seems to be okay with the configuration. It's downloading the plugins. Terraform initialized successfully. Now let's try to validate the code that was generated by Terraformer. So I'll just simply do Terraform validate on the configuration files that are here and see if it comes back with any errors. And it did, it came back with some errors. Well, it was kind of what I expected. That subnet ID is not a valid property of subnets. So we'll go into resources and I'm gonna go ahead and comment out the ID and comment the out the ID here. So that takes care of that. Any other errors or warnings? Well, it does give us a warning that, let me get rid of that. It does give us a warning here that the interpolation expression that is up here for the resource group name, you don't really have to do that anymore with versions of Terraform above 12 and above because they kind of got rid of that. So now you can simply do this. This would be the proper expression. Okay, so let's go ahead and run Terraform validate again. And this time it comes back and the configuration is valid. Now what happens if I go ahead and remove the rename on Terraform state? And now let's try to run a Terraform plan against that state and see what happens. <laughs> 
and it ran into an issue. It's saying it, that it doesn't know about this provider, unknown provider for the registry. And it's got this weird dash in here. So something's definitely up with this state file. And if I go ahead and look at the contents of the state file, it does have the provider defined as Azure RM. Maybe we could just do a search in here for Azure RM and see where it appears. It appears nine times. That one looks okay. That's just referring to the different uh, resource types. Those all look okay. Uh, it's referring to the provider, that looks fine. And unfortunately, I think that's where we need to stop. I've set up a configuration. My plan was to use Terraformer to generate the configuration and state based off of that deployed infrastructure and then move it into the management of Terraform. And we really didn't get there. There were a lot of bumps along the road. The configuration it created had some invalid syntax in it. It pulled in some properties of the subnet that, well, there aren't real properties of the subnet. They're attributes. You can't use them as arguments, the, the subnet ID. There was also some weird stuff with the state and the version of Terraform it referred to was not even the version that I'm running. And I couldn't find a way to change that unless I went and actually overwrote it. And in that case, now I'm making a lot of changes to what Terraformer is giving me. And generally speaking, if I were a regular person who's just trying this tool out, I would get very frustrated at this point and walk away. Now, I actually spent two more hours on this thing when I was working on it last night. I compiled the thing from source because there's actually a version 8.11 of Terraformer to see if that would fix it, and it did not. I tried monkeying around with the state file for a while to see if I could get it to read the state file property, and it, it didn't. And at that point, I, I had to give it up. And I, I'm sorry, I have to give Terraformer, I have to give, I have to give it a fail. I'm sorry. At least when it comes to working with Azure. Maybe this thing is like butter for GCP and it's awesome with AWS. But if you look at market share, Azure is number two behind AWS. And I would expect a tool like this to have, you know, first class support for Azure. And if you have Azure in your list of supported providers, then if it doesn't work on a very simple deployment like this, I can't really say that it's a supported provider. Now, I know some people are going to come at me and say, well, it works if you go and tweak X, Y, and Z inside the binary and re and, and then recreate it from source. And that maybe that's true. I don't know. You know, it's not in the docs and it doesn't work like I would expect it to. And I'm sure a lot of the problem comes from the fact that Terraform going from 11 to 12 changed a lot of stuff. And they've also changed some stuff in 13 and 14 on how you define providers and versions. And I, I know it's, it's hard to maintain an open source project. I acknowledge that you never have the resources or the time that you want to invest in it. But if someone's asking me if they should use Terraformer to import their infrastructure on Azure to work with Terraform, I'm going to say Probably not. I mean, maybe you could generate the configs for it, but you're not going to get it into the state file. You're still going to have to do Terraform import to get it into an existing state file. So where it is at the moment, it was an interesting adventure. I'm sure there's some work that could be done to improve it. I think it does have a future. I think this could be a really useful tool, but someone needs to pour some time into the Azure side of things. I'm sure they already have. I'm not, not saying people haven't done work, but Someone needs to pour more time into the Azure side of things to make sure that it works and follows proper syntax. And unfortunately, I don't have the time and I don't know how to program in Go. So that's kind of where my adventure with Terraformer ends. Hey, if you've enjoyed this episode, you can always support me on Patreon. The uh, list of current patrons is right up there. And thank you very much for all of your support. Uh, Y'all folks are awesome. Very much appreciated. Uh, if that's not your thing, totally cool. If you want to subscribe, that's awesome. If you want to share this with somebody else, that is also awesome too. And if you just enjoyed the video and you want to sit there and think about how awesome it was, I'm cool with that. That's fine. You do you. You know, if you want to reach out to me, I'm Ned Bellavance, Ned1313 on Twitter. You can find me on LinkedIn. And until next time, stay healthy, stay safe out there. Bye for now. Terraformer. Such a good album for real. I mean, everybody should really go listen to that.